come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday. Is that a question Whether you're mark? ready for that was a question mark. Is it, is it a review? We talk about movies. We're going to talk about a movie that no one has seen here tonight, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but we're going to talk about it at length and let you know whether or not we recommend it to you by the end of this uh, exciting episode. How um, do we even know this movie exists? Um, well, because, it's I mean, crazy. I've heard of this like forever. But uh, first of all, a little housekeeping. Uh, wherever you found us, please go there and give us that uh, like star rating or give us a review. We'll read that stuff on the air later in Igor's mailbag segment of our show. Uh, but all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you and helps us become the fastest growing movie review podcast in the universe prove us wrong help us along one of those two these are the internet radio superstars ali michaela sean and i'm colin and tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by colin uh, hey, Colin, what did we uh, what did we watch tonight? Well, I'm glad you asked, Sean. Tonight we watched a movie called, well, it depends on where you saw it. Yeah. You saw it in America. It was called Dracula's Dog, but the <laughs> British said that's a dumb title, and they called it Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, and that is the title Better. that's pretty much on all the video releases right now. This movie Better. comes at us from the year 1978. And it's directed by a fellow named Albert Band. Do you know? Yeah, Albert. Albert Band? He's the father of Charles Band, isn't he? Who's Charles Band, Sean? Charles Band is Full Moon Pictures. <laughs> and who are Full Moon Pictures? So making Pictures? movies like this is a family trade? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I had no well, idea. We, we watched something else that was directed by Albert Band. Indeed, we did, Sean. Well, it just so happens that we have a fellow named mf mad and he is the keeper of the saturday night freak show wall of fame the sack right. of mad we have a massive wall here that we're uh we're we're gonna start doing some renovations and expansion on because it's it's running yeah, out we of have space. To. uh but we put up the photo and a fo- you know of uh, and a little plaque for everybody who if we've done their movies at least three times but it turns out that albert band not only did he direct dracula's dog not only did he direct Ghoulies 2, which we also did on the Saturday Night Freak Show, not only yes. was he uncredited as the waxwork grandfather in the movie Tourist Trap, but he is also the executive producer of other Saturday Night Freak Show picks, such as Metal Storm, The Destruction of Jared Sin in 3D, Robot yes. Jocks, and Castle Freak. Wow. That's right. But you re- may remember Albert Band as the director of the 1950s movie I Bury the Living. No? Oh. How about Dr. Mordred? Yes. The full moon feature that has uh, uh, Jeffrey Combs. It's basically, it's their shot at Dr. Strange. They just lost the license, but it's still a Dr. Strange movie. Right. You should check that one out. Yes. And Prehysteria. Anyone? The dinosaur movie? With yes. The kid? He also did Prehysteria ah, too. I remember that. Oh, yeah. Charles. I'm sorry. What is this movie? Which one? Prehysteria? Yeah. The kid you know the finds kid a little from dinosaur Last egg? Action Hero? Oh, you're both talking. <laughs> yeah. The, the kid from Last Action Hero? Yeah. Okay. okay. He's the star and he's got little dinosaurs. Colin, continue. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Prehysteria. That's, that's it. He's, he's got little dinosaurs that are alive and they're just tiny dinosaurs. Yeah, that was back when Full Moon, Full Moon is obviously, you know, Charles Band's company is known for movies like Puppet Master and uh, Shrunken Heads and uh, Demonic Toys and all that stuff. Um, But he made an off brand that was called Moonbeam. It was kids entertainment and uh, Prehysteria was the one that launched it. Just real quick and then we can move on from it. Um, Are the little dinosaurs stop action or are they like, what are they? Are they? If memory serves, they are stop motion. Dinosaurs. Yeah, I think so. Action, sorry, stop motion. Yeah. Yep. But that's not a premise for a movie. Like, that's about? not a movie. It's like <laughs> ET only with dinosaurs. 
Okay, oh, that the, that the little explains dinosaurs. it a little more. We're showing pictures right now. I feel now. like we might have to do this in a movie at some point. All right. Well, first of all, I want to play you the audio trailer to Zoltan Hound of Dracula. It's 30 seconds. Uh -oh. You got you got this is well, this is Dracula's dog. His night to howl. <laughs> Dracula's dog. The meanest vampire of them all has a four-legged friend and he's out for blood. Crown International Pictures presents Dracula's Dog. <laughs> Whoops, there he goes again. There's more to the left ah. than meets the throat in Dracula's Dog. Rated R. <laughs> Whoops, there he goes again. <laughs> Killing right. people left and right. So that's the advertisement in 1978 <laughs> that got people that's to great. line up at the drive-in to see dracula's dog go see dracula's dog rated r don't bring the kids <laughs> um wow okay so wow. We're, i'm go i'm operating under how, the assumption where did, you, where did you find this hold on first of all where how did you come across dracula's dog now it makes this sense smells like colin it. buying bundle packs is what it sounds like well, because this sounds like Colin watched every Dracula movie and just like I have nothing left. Yeah, he bought, watch. he bought a Dracula bundle DVD <laughs> no. set, and this was did, in there. Did you see this on one of your trailers? Like when you've got all those, <laughs> you know, those trailer DVDs. Did you see it on there? Um. Oh fuck! I'm not sure if I did. I mean, obviously, I I've heard that that audio trailer before, and I now I don't remember where that was on something. Some audio CD or something that, or somewhere that you know somebody was putting together weird, uh, or weird uh, old movie trailers. I remember this movie. I didn't see it, but I remember the video box cover. This is a VHS, uh, you know, thing that you'd go to the video store and be wandering through the horror section, and there's Dracula's dog, and you sit there and you go like, "That sounds like the dumbest movie I have ever heard of," <laughs> right? And so you pass yeah. it by. It's only years later when you double back, when you've seen everything else, you've seen every horror movie that's ever been made, and you go, you know what I haven't seen? I haven't seen Dracula's, Dracula's Dog. dog. Uh, it so does I, have one of the coolest posters I've ever seen. Yeah, we're going to post that on our, our social media, uh, which you can uh, find us on, uh, on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and uh, Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I feel like they were, I feel like both countries were onto something. Like, Dracula's Dog is stupid, but Zoltan, that's a long title. I feel like if they had just gone with Hound of Dracula, would have been a good title. Well, yeah, that would have been the ultimate. But there yeah. might have been some confusion with a movie called Devil Dog, Hound of Hell, which I think came out somewhere around the same period in time. So this is the 70s. Also <laughs> in the 70s, at this period of time... Uh, vampire movies and Dracula movies were like all over the place. I mean, I don't know that I can uh, accurately give you the impression of what this was, but like every goddamn horror movie, even if it wasn't a uh, explicitly a vampire movie, had some kind of vampire overtones to it. Um, I mean, it's like everything. As I'm going back and watching, I'm like, holy cow, this is you know. But there was this movement to. Um, kind of do uh the old world moving into the new world like the 70s was where they did like okay we've done gothic vampire movies for like 30 to 40 years right now we're gonna get groovy we're gonna bring them into the modern day we're gonna bring them into uh the the 70s uh, and i think the first one was um i think it was uh kolchak the night stalker i think did uh yeah. did one of the first ones and somewhere in that time you also had count yorga vampire and uh and blackula um were one of the, a couple of the very first you know bringing the vampire into the modern age of course if you really want to uh, uh check out something obscure there's a uh, a vampire western from the 60s 50s Vampire Western. I can't remember the title of it. I'm going to have to look that up at some point. Oh, shit. Colin. Yeah. You piqued my interest and then you left me hanging. I'm going to spoil the end. They kill him with the, I think they get like two fan blades or it's like a crucifix on top what of it. What are you spoiling yeah. anything for? Uh, so, um, no. <laughs> Vampire Gunslingers. You did it again. 
So, so I think by the time, you know, cause we had big budget vampire movies like the 79, uh, land, Frank Langella Dracula, and you had, uh, you know, Germany, Werner Herzog remade Nosferatu, you know, and then you had the comedy version, uh, love at first bite. And somewhere in there, someone said, well, we've done everything that we possibly can. And then Albert band or somebody said, had a, a stroke of genius. So, you know, Dracula probably did have a dog. Some pets, yeah. and Yeah, he had pets, right? And that pet was probably also a vampire. And we should make a movie about Dracula and his vampire dog. Actually, not a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> Colin, Billy the Kid versus Dracula? Is that it? That is not the one I'm thinking of. It had, no, it, had, no, it was like uh, Town of Blood or something of blood or I don't know. Yeah, it's older than that. Billy the Kid versus Dracula, I think, is one of the worst movies ever made. I haven't seen it. All right. This is what I hear. It's I think it's up there with Plan the 9 from Outer Space. Is one yeah, of the now most you just ep- challenged Sean. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. You did. You did. Yeah, yes. I think this is Colin's secret thing to do. He's like, I don't, I don't want to pick them, but I can make Sean do it <laughs> through I influence. Have, I have never seen Billy the Kid versus Dracula. So there's that. Okay. Um. Yeah, so um, so so we know the kind of the creative team behind this movie, uh, right? Albert Band, uh, father of Charles, and um, it has some people in it that you may recognize from other stuff, including Oscar winner Jose Ferrar. Yeah, who um, is, he's the son of, uh, or sorry, the father of Miguel Ferrar. You know Miguel Ferrar. Yes, who recently what, passed away a couple of years ago? Yeah, he was um, you know, Bob Morton in RoboCop. He was on Twin Peaks as Albert. Yeah, and a bunch of stuff. NCIS, of course. Yeah, um, but we're actually putting thanks to MF Matt again. We're putting Jose Ferrar on the wall of uh, of fame here. Um, do you know what he was in that we've watched? The Sentinel. You are correct, sir. How'd you know that? Ah. Uh, I remember um, uh, his walkthrough because he only walks through that movie. I think. Um, does he have a line? <laughs> no, he's he at the beginning and the it. end. I think. Yeah, he's yeah. like uh, he just walks through it. I'm like, is that Miguel Ferrar? Is that what's going on? Yeah, and he was also uh, Padishah Emperor Shaddam the Fourth in David Lynch's Dune, which uh, we did on the Saturday it's, night. It, show. That's all fuzzy. It's like I blacked it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And I also, the entire movie. oh man, I mean, it well, was like what, like three years ago we did it. I think so. But we've been at so. this. What we established, we've been at this for like 17 years or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, a long time. We did our 400th yeah. episode last week. Our 30th year. Um, <laughs> may we live so long. Uh, Colin, yes. Why didn't Farrar have five movies uh, as this character? That's a good question, like what, Sean. Wh- why? Because I, he's pretty great in this movie. Like his his calm demeanor in chasing vampires and vampire dogs is like really cool, along with everything else that he a wears and b drives in this movie. What are you talking like this, about? This, sh- this should have been a franchise in the seventies and eighties. He is uh, he's from the old country. Um, yeah, Bron- uh, Bronco. Inspector Bronco. Bronco. Inspector Bronco. Bronco. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, yeah, he. Uh, um, I forgot where did he start off in the movie. In the old country, uh, he comes over looking for Mike Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're gonna have to bear with us, listener, because some of this stuff, as we roll it out to you, you're gonna go. I, I don't believe it, but it is actually yeah. true. The yeah. lead character in this movie is Mike Drac, Michael Dracula, relative of Fred Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> Also just, true. <laughs> also true. Also canon. I just wanted nothing more than a close up of his business card that said Mike Dracula. That's all yes. I wanted. Yeah. Like the American Psycho business yes. card scene, but he's like, Mike what? Dracula, how you doing? <laughs> That's what I- Mike, Mike Dracula. Yeah. I well, wanted. We found the entire um, Dracula family tree spelled out for us because early in the movie, well, the movie is set up. By, uh, I assume the Romanian soldiers, this is present day, um, bomb a, they're excavating for, uh, who knows, I don't even know why. They're blowing shit up in the countryside, assuming this is Transylvania, and they uncover the Dracula family tomb, 
right? And we go down there and we see, you know, everybody's on the 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 whatever the name plates are on the wall. So we have Count Count Igor Dracula, Big Papa, Countess Eva. There's a Mikhail Dracula, a Frederick Dracula, which is the mm-hmm. Fred Fred Dracula. That's right. And Fred then Dracula. there's two unmarked um, graves. One of those, uh, I think, because is there like a uh, is there like an earthquake or something that happens when the soldiers get in there? Yes, knocks one of the coffins out, so a coffin spills out, right? And uh, one of the soldiers has to investigate, so he takes the lid off this thing, and inside is this uh, tarp wrapped body with a stake in it. And of course, yeah. as these fuckers do, uh, you're curious, you know, and maybe you're like, maybe the stake is worth something. I think they're compelled. I think there's still a little, uh, as you call it, still, there's a little bit of a whammy going on around this stuff. The zap? I think, yeah, I think there's a compulsion to do it more okay. than just curiosity. I was curious because this guy pulls this stake out and stares at it like, oh, look at this is ornate. And, you know, and it's just a piece of wood. <laughs> this is such ornate wood. Yeah. Mm. Maybe I can get something off of this. This may have been a there. table leg at some point. Yeah. I take this to Lloyd's of London or Christie's or something. <laughs> Now, Colin, some- this this part brings up part of the uh, Dracula lore that I don't have much experience with and I didn't know was a thing. If you take the stake out of a body, it can come back. I've never seen that before. Oh, yeah. It happened all the time in the 70s, uh, vampire, 60s and 70s vampire movies. Oh, yeah. Okay, because I thought if you staked them, it was done. No, 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 no. Well, what I see, here's the thing I've never seen in a movie. Well, may, have I? Um there's always this talk in this movie. They also do it where it's like, you know, we have to burn the bodies and scatter the ashes to the wind. Like, are the ashes going to reform? That has happened in uh, the Hammer Dracula movies. That's right. You pour a little blood on the ashes right. and uh, and Duder comes back. If uh, <laughs> can you imagine them releasing the ashes and there's some dude like. 20 feet away who just gets a face full of Dracula ashes. Like, like and he starts asking and he, well, then he starts experiencing like vampire stuff. What do we call this? Is I'm copywriting it right now. <laughs> we could do a sequel to, we could do a sequel off of this movie present day where they do burn the bodies, release the ashes and some dudes walking by and just <laughs> gets Dracula ashes in his face and then starts experiencing stuff. Yeah. Well, Come on. <laughs> When it comes to the the whole like you take the stake out and then they can come back thing, I think that's something we should revisit when we talk about how this movie ends. Yeah, yeah, right. But I mean, this this okay. But but here's the thing: like we're a couple minutes into this movie, obviously we know what the title is, but it turns out that the the staked corpse is uh, Dracula's dog who comes back from the dead and immediately like attacks this guard and bites him on the neck. Very gently. Ever so gently. Mm-hmm. Well, because he just goes, and they go right in, and it's like, boom, Zoltan, Hound of Dracula. And I'm sitting there going, A, oh my God, this is actually like a vampire movie. They're just dogs. Yeah. And B, <laughs> I can't believe that, uh, you know, I'm like, what? They staked the dog too? They didn't put him in a coffin? Like, what was the scene leading up to that? I want to know how that happened that you end up. Staking the it's dog just a note in the, the coffin heart. that says we weren't fucking around. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's amazing shit. And then, then uh, Zoltan, after he kills the guard, drags another coffin out of this is dog actor. We never do find out who he is in the credits. We never did get a name. I was hoping for Pookie, Pookie playing oh Zoltan or something like that. But he pulls the other coffin out. And in that coffin is, uh, what, what was it? Veit Schmidt is the character's name. This is played by the great Reggie Nalder. You guys are, you don't remember Reggie Nalder, do you? Mm-mm. Reggie Nalder. Well, he's, he's got a, he's got one of the most iconic faces in cinema history. Cause he's got all these burns. It kind of looks like he's a skull with maybe a prosthetic nose that they stretched skin over it. Uh, he was in. He worked with Alfred Hitchcock in *The Man Who Knew Too Much*. He was in uh, Dario Argento's uh, first movie, *The Bird with the Crystal Plumage*. Uh, he was a witchfinder uh, in the *Witchfinder General* ripoff, *Mark of the Devil*, the movie that you had to get a barf bag when you went to go see it in the theater. 
because it was full I of torture. One. Did you? The Mark of the Devil? Yeah. 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 And yeah. Uh, I bought it at a horror convention a couple years ago. Yeah. I mean, nice. I think it's the most famous, isn't it the most famous like bar movie, uh, horror movie? Yeah, bar they had bag? tons of them. Yeah. It wasn't expensive. They were practically giving them away. They have so many. Well, everybody, the if you do remember... <laughs> If you do remember Reggie Nalder, it's because he played uh, Barlow, the Nosferatu-looking vampire in uh, Toby Hooper's Salem's Lot. Right, he's the guy on the gotcha. on the, all the covers. Oh. That's that's right. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. Yeah. That's now that I know. say that, you're going like, oh yeah, that, that's his face. Gotcha. <laughs> he lo- he looks like uh, what's his nuts from um, the Last Jedi. <laughs> oh, the Emperor. Uh, he looks well, not the Emperor, but the I forgot his fucking name. Oh. Dude, who gets cut in half? Yeah, spoiler. Snoke. 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 He kind of looks like Snoke. Yep, supreme, supreme ruler Snoke. That's right. Okay, but this dog. This is see. This is why people love dogs. Even in the afterlife, this dog. The first thing he does after he gets unstaked, kills the guy that unstakes him, turn, or turns him whatever, and then immediately goes and frees his owner. This mm-hmm. is the most loyal dog ever. Oh yeah, loyal dog. I can only hope my cat does this for me when I die. No, she won't. She wouldn't. She won't. <laughs> no. This is why dog people love dogs because they will. Well, right. I can make that movie though. Has there been a vampire cat movie? Cats of Dracula. Dracula's cat. Uh, should, we or, start, should we make it starring my cat? Or, <laughs> or, to, or to be a little more uh, crude, uh, Dracula's pussy, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the porn parody. <laughs> yes. Um. So, okay, right here, though, uh, telling you the kind of movie that you're in for. Uh, so their goal, this is setting up the whole, what the movie's going to be, right? Once uh, Veit Schmidt is brought back to life, he communicates telepathically with Zoltan. I don't think Reggie Nalder actually opens his mouth to speak in this entire movie. I don't think I so. I wish I could communicate telepathically with my dog. That would make recording this podcast from home a lot easier. Yeah, for sure. Maybe you do. Sit the fuck down. I'm busy right now. Oh, don't kill them now. Zoltan, you must kill him. Zoltan, go and do this. Not her, Zoltan. I would love to see Harley kill. I don't know why. I think think that would be the most adorable thing in the world if Harley killed someone. He's He's really protective of me specifically. And sometimes my husband will get him real worked up. And I'm like, someday you're going to push him too far. (laughs) I don't eat you. He shot me with a Nerf gun once and I thought Harley was going to kill him. Like he (laughs) reacted. That's funny. Well, I sent you that picture of the pug with the uh, in the Dracula duds. Yes. You uh, did horrible. this. Yeah. This movie turned Colin into somewhat of a normal human being as far as pets go. <laughs> I've never seen Colin post more dog pics in my life. Yet they were all dressed as Dracula, but still <laughs> he was posting pet pics all week. This is well. This is part of the Saturday Night Freak Show thing. Like you, you know, you pick a movie, you're trying to promote it. This is advertising, right? And then of course I advertise <laughs> it on the it wrong us. day. I was like, but you're sending him to. Yeah, yeah, you're just sending them to us. I'm getting you psyched because right, I'm getting you in the headspace it to worked. appreciate I this was movie. Excited. Yeah, yeah, it definitely worked. <laughs> the dog in this movie did not wear a, a cape, unfortunately. But <laughs> ooh, no truth in advertising. Yeah, I did. I did like though that how like that dog and the other dogs like when they turned got like like a silvery gray color. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. Like they look really sleek. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, they're trying to go with like the doll. The dogs are turning pale because they're all drained of blood, and they look like pale. T- <laughs> like, oh. they're, they're just kind it's of like, like they're, shimmery. They're like their hair is all slicked back, like like mm-hmm. uh, fucking Dracula's. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay, but this is what I don't get about what well, I don't get. They they just obviously didn't care in this opening scene, right? Um, you got all the Draculas there on the wall, right in their tombs, and Veidt comes out and he's like Zoltan. We must go and find our new master, right? Yeah. <laughs> but why not just, can't you not just unstake or bring them back to life? Like, why aren't they just sticking around there? Right. This is the immortal question right there. Were, they, were the other ones burned? Is that why? Uh, well, No, I think they found all the bodies. They said they had all the bodies and that's why they burned them. Oh, they did? Well, yeah, at the, I, I, at the end when the, the soldiers do. They're like, we have well, to no, burn the all. They, they burn everything. Yeah, we got to burn like, all the Draculas. 
So I think the bodies are all still in there. Yeah. Okay. They found them all, and they were all staked, except for two coffins that were missed. That were empty. One coffin had Vite maybe Schmidt. They, maybe they didn't get along with the other ones, and they were like, "Hey, let's try to find this new guy. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll jive better. I don't know." Yeah. <laughs> but this, of course, leads them to America, right? Hunting down the uh, their new master, who is going to be Mike Dracula. He's going by hey, <laughs> Mike Drake. Yeah, Mickey D, um, who's living with his family in sunny California. It's Mike um, D. Not a surfer, unfortunately. He's just a family uh. man living in a house <laughs> and uh, takes his family for the weekend vacation. I wish he was like a realtor Brown. or something. So we get Dracula Realty or something like that. So I yeah. like, I really, I wanted him to be Dracula <laughs> and I wanted his name everywhere. I wanted a car salesman. Like his Dracula own- Motors. Yeah, 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 that's what I wanted. <laughs> Come on down to Dracula Motors. It and then, then we can get a business card scene with all of these occupations. Yes. <laughs> that's what I wanted. Oh, Dracula, Dracula used car salesman. Okay, copyright yes. 2020 Saturday Night Freak Show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Dracula Motors. We don't suck. We uh, don't suck. <laughs> we don't suck. Yeah. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Mic drop. Um, well, I mean, where do we have to go from there? I mean, that's uh, that's it. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of plot to this movie. Basically, um, right? You no, have, it's just a bunch of dog wrestling. Well, that's that, the family that, goes camping. Lots of yes. dogs. But they take can, their. They have a big brood of dogs, right? They've got they two do. big uh, German shepherds, um, Alice and Samson, right? Yeah. And then there's Ernie, a litter. Annie? Annie. Oh, Annie. Sorry, Annie yeah. and Samson. Yeah. And there's they have a litter of uh, new new puppies, right? They're two puppies, and they take them all out to the to the campground with them because I think they're they're alerted that something's going on at their house because uh, Zoltan and his master, you know, show up there, and uh, the dog like gets on the roof and goes into the bedroom and is staring at him. Dog Zoltan, so he's this Doberman pincher, but whenever they show him, he's got these glowing you know, uh, reflective glowing eyes, you know, however they do this. Um, I feel like they probably just shined a flashlight in the dog's eyes. Kind I was of like, something. That's, that's pretty simple to do. Half of my pictures of my cat, he has those eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's how they make him look creepy. Although he does whenever like I, uh, he bites somebody. They always put like the bloody, uh, you know, blood on his, uh, well, he looks like he has, did they give him extra fangs or are those just oh, dog for fangs? Sure. They did just, really big. Those were really big. They were definitely so big. really big things. All right. Well, like he couldn't even close his mouth sometimes. Dog makeup, courtesy of Stan Winston. <laughs> did you see that in the credits? I did. I saw Stan Winston. Stan that Winston. That's right. <laughs> Before he met James Cameron, Stan Winston did the makeup effects <laughs> for Zoltan, for- Hound of Dracula. Dracula's uh, dog. Well, Michael Drake is played by uh, Michael Pataki. Um, he hasn't made it on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame yet, but he's on his way because we've done two of his movies. Um, you may remember him from The Baby. I, he was the leather baby? jacket wearing guy. Remember that the sister was trying at the party? Yeah. Oh, the leather jacket guy. Yes. Yeah. The, when they go to that adult party, remember? Oh, yeah. No. I remember all the situations. I just don't remember his face. Wow. The baby. Well, the baby. Most like, people, how could you guys forget anything from the baby? Yeah. I've tried to forget most of the baby. <laughs> <laughs> the episode that lives on in infamy. Um, but I mean, everybody like, okay, so I'm saying his name and you're like, well, who the fuck is this guy? He was the, uh, he was Ivan Howie Drago's uh, promoter in uh, Rocky Four. He was. Uh, he was also uh, in Halloween Four, right? Yeah, Lewis. Part Four. That was. Lewis. Yeah. Yes. When you when you when you <laughs> put that in the messages during the movie, I'm like, I didn't get it. And then you quoted him later. I'm like, oh yeah, that's him. Now with Myers gone, my hope is he'll either transfer, retire, or die. Or die. Yeah, that's him, Michael Pataki. So he's the <laughs> lead. Dude. He's uh, Mike Dracula. He also plays Dracula in a couple of uh, flashback scenes where we see how the animosity started between Dracula and Zoltan. It's great. 
Because Dracula's the do- trying. The dog has flashbacks. <laughs> First of all, I don't think we established that. The dog has flashbacks in this Yeah, movie. just like Hills Have Eyes 2. The original Hills <laughs> dog yeah. has flashbacks. Is an yeah. actual character. Uh, yeah, because Dracula is about, he breaks into this woman's bedroom and is going for the, you know, going to neck on her. And uh, Zoltan gets loose, right, or from uh, from Veit Schmidt when he's a human. And is like barking outside the window and denies Dracula his dinner. And Dracula turns into a bat and just like flies down. (laughs) That was great. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, these are are moments you can't get back again. I mean, they're priceless. (laughs) Little bat bites the dog, turns the dog into a vampire. Then, of course, then uh, uh, when it's resurrected, we got to ship them across the sea on a steamer boat. And uh, go hunting for the uh, descendant of Dracula, who's out there camping in the woods with his family and these dogs. Now, you would think that the the focus would be the family, but it turns out this is a vampire movie. This vampire dog goes around biting other dogs (laughs) and turning them into vampires. And it's adorable. (laughs) It is adorable. (laughs) The way he so gently just like barely grips like the top of their neck. Like when he's coming in for it, he comes in so slow. I don't know how they train the dog to do this, but he goes in so slow. And like, it's even more gentle than like when a mom dog like scruffs a puppy. It's like yeah. even more gentle than that somehow. Well, there's a, some of it. I was wondering if they were doing it reverse, uh, you know, whatever the, oh, the, the biting, because it looked like it went boop, right onto the neck. I'm like, yeah, it's a reverse shot or whatever. But uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, all sorts of uh, technical special effects tricks are uh used in this movie such as the old uh which i love whenever i see it the old uh a dog paw on a stick trick mm. right where they're breaking Was that down coming in yeah <laughs> through the door and everything or just like yes. ah! <laughs> dog paws on a stick we love animal paws on a stick yeah, yeah maybe you want to watch strays again those cat paws. <laughs> meow meow <laughs> Well, it uh, because I mean, this is a movie then that takes place mostly at night. You wonder what these people are doing during the day on their, uh, you know, uh, uh, RV trip to nowhere. They're going fishing. We never see them fishing. They're all just hanging out by the RV. Uh, this is kind of like a TV movie or something. They're like, wow, you didn't really have a budget to do anything. You're just yeah, hanging out. They're, because they're near L.A., right? Yeah, it says filmed in Hollywood, Hollywood, California. Sure, but it's like we don't have the money to be here, so we're just going to go off into the woods. Yeah, but they are tracked down by Vite Schmidt now. Vite, um, because I mean, I guess this is what you do if you're if you're styling in uh, the 1970s. Uh, you hijack a hearse, you know, because that shows your your sinister Discreet. intentions. Yeah, Very and discreet. so you can bring the coffin of your your dog master. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what invites the Renfield, right? Zoltan is Dracula for all intents yes. and purposes in this movie. He's just a dog. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> and the, the whole idea is that all you got to do really here, I mean, you think about it, right? Zoltan bites Michael Drake, turns him into the new uh, vampire master. Movie's over. Uh, this movie runs for like an hour and a half and the fucking dog can't accomplish this mission, despite the fact that it is right there on the guy, at least like for there's like five scenes every night. These dogs attack, get right up on him. One time it's like, I don't know why he suddenly ran away from me. Oh, yeah, pan down. He's got the he has the oh, he's got right. the crucifix. You know, he didn't know it. Right, right, right. Um, there's also we have some victims. Uh, that are kind of tangential to the plot. Um, these are fishermen, right? Who look like, yes. you know, bearded fishermen with the stocking cap, even though they're in the middle of the woods. I think there's like a lake, supposedly, that we, I don't know if we really get good looks at this thing. Nobody's ever really fishing on it, uh, nope. but they get attacked at night. There's one gore scene to justify the R rating where uh, Zoltan munches on this guy and rips him up. And we get yeah, like, that was pretty gnarly. Yeah. Like yeah, that's pretty cool. His, eat, eating his knees and his guts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Read it off. I love the way that scene was edited, though. It would cut to, like, a close-up of the dog's mouth, just, like, biting air, and then cut to, like, the injuries on the guy. It was 
<laughs> Amazing. Well, it's one of those movies where when 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 our, your actor is fighting the animal, he's like actually having to grab the animal and pull the animal towards him because they're, clearly they're having fun. <laughs> the, yeah. the animal's like, "Okay, what are we doing?" And he's like, "No, no, you got to make it look like you know. Let me grab you by the neck and pull you into me." <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised there was no uh, no inanimate dog wrestling. It was all real dogs. They're mm-hmm. just like, "Come on, bite me." That Doberman was like had a lot of energy and was pretty athletic. Like when he's jumping through that like shack of a house later, I was like, "Holy crap!" Tell me about that. What happens there? Because that's like our next major location, right? Yeah, I don't remember how or why they end up in there. Well, what's his name? Finally finds him because um, Bronco Bronco has been traveling from the old country. And um, he he makes his way down to the camping ground. He finally finds him. I like the uh, way after he. Uh, he goes incognito in America. <laughs> yes, incognito. How you dress in the seventies? So he he dresses up. Um, I mean, his dress is very, uh, I'll say, fancy for the time. It looks very cool. And he's he got gets a, a beret. Very, he's got a beret. He just like he's got those um, camouflage tweed. Coat. Yeah, well, he's got tweed dress suits and shit, and he just looks like you know, uh, uh, and sounds like Donald Sutherland uh, in the seventies, basically. And he mm-hmm. gets a, uh, gets a uh, boss ass car to drive around in too, yeah, and the music to go with it. A, he's driving around an Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme, and it's fucking awesome. Like it's, it's pretty it's awesome. It's a sweet convertible. Which is which he saw. He's like, oh, a convertible. Oh, very nice. <laughs> like he really liked it. He knew this guy knows what that he's cool. <laughs> my, uh, I think my dad had that car, but it was in che- it was cherry red, and it had leather interior. It was a sweet ass car. It was awesome. what happened to it. He sold it. Everyone sells it. He had a, you know, it was like his first car that he bought himself and then he had a family and he sold it, you know. I was going to say, was he holding you in one hand and the keys in the other and he's just like, "Uh, I don't know. (laughs) I remember him picking me up from school in it a couple times. (laughs) Did he look at me like, you know, you're the reason I'm not going to have this anymore, right? (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) Well, they, the two of them end up, uh, well, Blanco is like, you know, Vite is looking for you. And he's still trying to put it together. The, the other coffin, the em- other empty coffin, uh, had a dog in it. Because, yeah, he doesn't know that yet. But we find out that there was a dog because uh, Drake, when he's uh, packing to go on vacation, this is another one of the greatest moments in, the, in this movie, uh, is going through the old family photos. And he he's going finds- through a random trunk to find bullets. And he just happens to find pictures of the fucking dog and Draculas you know, and shit. You store your bullets in the same trunk with your family photos. That's just what you do. They're this like nice tin types too. Like they're <laughs> prestige photos. Yeah. yeah. So that means Dracula in this. Well, I don't know when the camera was invented. Like was that like late eighteen? Was it sixteen hundreds? The, I mean, not, I don't even know. Maybe, but you know, like, I mean, daguerreotypes and whatnot. No idea. It was in use in the 1800s, at least, probably in yeah. in wide use. Um, should there be should there be pictures of Dracula dogs? I, I should there be the pictures of Dracula? War, I think the Civil War was the first time the historical events were photographed. Yeah, we got pictures of Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah there's stuff. Uh, there's th- there's English stuff um, around that time too, or maybe beforehand. But yeah. Um, the but there's photos of I mean the, you know uh, somebody said that they're uh, glamour shot photos of Dracula in his regal cape standing there with the you know his mastiff you know uh, Zoltan yes. standing beside him. This is how uh, Drake is able to go like oh my god this is the dog right that uh, I saw this is Dracula's dog <laughs> I saw him in these right. photographs uh, at my house that I have. Um, the two of them rent a cabin because. Uh, Blanco is convinced that um, uh, Veit Schmidt, who's like parked somewhere off in the in the the, the glade, the clearing, sure, right? in the foliage, in the foliage, and he doesn't do much in this movie. Uh, Reggie Bannister or Reggie Bannister, uh, Reggie Nolder. Yeah. He just like there's a lot of close ups of his face. Yeah, there are. <laughs> and well, he's a he, he's a servant. So he doesn't, I don't think he knows what to do. He's like, I, the only thing I know how to do is find a master. And so that's what he's doing. Other than that, he's, he just, it's not like he sits around and plays solitaire. I'm pretty sure he's just 
hanging out, staring into the woods, waiting to find a master. Well, at some point, the the daughter uh, finds uh, his his lair, right? She stumbles upon the um, the the hearse during the day, and she has this uh, friendly conversation with him, which I think can only happen in the seventies. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, hey, mister, this is my full name, and I'm over here with my family. This is what we're doing. I'm like, shut up. No. <laughs> right? This is why so many kids got abducted. <laughs> shit like this is strangers. <laughs> oh, wow. Like, we're victim blaming. Okay. Stranger danger. Yeah, I mean, she she went out of her she way is, to go yes. talk to a, a guy with a hearse out in the middle of nowhere. Right? Yeah. And like, you know, my family is like five like, miles away. I, I don't they wouldn't notice my if door. I was gone. I don't answer my door when someone rings on it that I don't know, you know, like, right. I know. Yeah. I had a food delivery today and I told the dude better back up five feet. I'll trust you. <laughs> How the well, modern I, age has changed us in the seventies. Everybody was a friend that you just hadn't met yet. Yep. It's like, yeah, that's what the serial killers want you to think. Colin. <laughs> There's only like two so of them. easier back then. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, she's like, yeah, my name's Carol and I'm staying with my family over here and I'm looking for my dog. Have you seen my dog? He's about this big and blah, blah. The meantime, this creepiest man in the world is staring at her and not saying anything as he's parked next to his big black hearse. Right. He's <laughs> just, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, okay, I guess I'll talk to you later. Thanks a lot, mister. Bye bye. And away she goes. It's awesome. Tone deaf. Murdered. Um, uh, so the, the fisherman's dogs get, uh, bit by Zoltan. They get turned into, into vampires. Um, we see the little puppy, um, that the Drakes brought with them wander off into the woods and Zoltan gets the puppy like right off the bat. And I think that's the first dog murder. Every dog in this, in this, uh, movie dies at least once. Uh, <laughs> and then comes back. <laughs> Uh, then he eventually turns the, um, the families to German shepherds, right? Yep. I love that it had that moment, uh, later on in the movie, which is like a prerequisite in a vampire movie where the hero looks at the person that they know and they're like, Oh my God, you too, you know, or whatever that you've become a vampire. Only this time it's Annie, the fucking German shepherd. <laughs> Cause he lets Annie into the car when the car's under attack and all the, the dogs are piling on the, uh, on the yeah. roof of it. And they let Annie get in the car. That's like, like, Oh no. And he's turned into a vampire too. Oh my God. The noises <laughs> these dogs make is incredible. Like I, this gotta be, it sounds like people just going, uh, and they slowed it down and shit. Sounds like dinosaurs at certain points. <laughs> it's yeah, nothing something. dog-like. Yeah, I was going to say, it's like a velociraptor. <laughs> well, Zoltan, I mean, you have to do some kind of vocalization on your lead vampire. I mean, if it's a dog, you're just going to make it sound like a vampire no. dog. Uh, dog. There, was, there was a moment when the family is camping and they hear, like, the one dog has already gotten loose. And they hear like it's cries in the distance and the daughter like runs out trying to look for it. Was that supposed to be a misdirection? Like, were we supposed to think that she got bit and she was turned? Cause that's how I felt like they were trying to set it up to make us believe that that's what happened. It was shot like it. Cause when they did the turnaround of her, I was just like, he had that look in her face. That like, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah well, she was, it was yeah. Like, with the, when the fishermen find her and they bring her yeah. back and yeah, it's kind of around. But it turns out yeah. she she's silent and just looking around like she got scratched. Did she get bit? Is she a vampire? Yeah. Sequel. Because they they I leave mean, the movie once Blanco shows up and he's like, Mr. Drake, I need to talk to you. You are actually descended from a long line of Draculas. That actually makes so much sense now. Like what? she very well could have could have been bitten and she is the sequel because we have set up at the end too yeah they could be they could be carrying on the dracula name that actually would be great this is we need to make a sequel to this movie why they haven't with blanco still continuing i don't know who we'd get to play the jose for our character now but back in this is a missed opportunity cast malcolm mcdowell and i was just gonna say yeah i never see it (laughs) well sorry malcolm 
Well, I mean, um, Drake takes all this kind of with a grain of salt, you know, like uh, you're a joke. He's just like, I'm suing Hollywood. They've been making Dracula movies without my permission this whole time. That was a good line. Which is a good joke. It's a good line. Yeah. You think that's funny, Mr. Drake, but I tell you, this is very serious. This whole movie is so goddamn serious. uh, But I think that's (laughs) that's like to its credit. Right. Yeah. It doesn't wink at the audience like. Until the very end, I suppose, right? The the very last shot. But the yeah, rest of it is like goofy faced wink, where it's just like, yeah, yeah, we'll get there, we'll get there, because it's it's <laughs> totally worth it. Um, so yeah, so Blanco rents a cabin, and this is the big the centerpiece of the movie, I think, right? He's like, we're gonna rent a cabin. Vite's gonna look for you, so it doesn't matter where we go. Yeah, he's eventually gonna find you. So they rent this cabin, and they board it up, and that night they come under attack by the vampire uh, dogs. This is an attack that lasts all night. I like the way there's a fade out and then it fit, you know, it's like the dogs are trying to bust down the door. Uh, they're trying to come in through the ceiling. They're Soltan scratching. He a hole in the ceiling. He does. He's chewing through the roof. Yeah. yeah. There's a big full moon out too. That's always in every shot, which is fantastic. The other dogs trying to like burrow under the ground. I mean, this is a siege. So much. Yeah. Like there's, there's a scene from a werewolf movie. There's a fade out and a fade up, and it's like, you know, whatever, six hours into the siege. It doesn't say that, but that's what it felt like. Um, <laughs> the guys are like all tired. <laughs> Three hours later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, so these, they, I like the way that they eventually do get into the, because I was like, well, where's this going to go? Like, wh- what's going to happen here? They do get in. Zoltan does tear a hole in the ceiling, and then the ceiling caves in. And he gets into the room and you're like, oh, my God, this is it. You know, we must be in the end stretch here. Well, no, the sun comes up and he's like, eh, I got to go. I, I could yeah. I could bite you right now, but sun's up. I got to check out. Right. Yeah. I don't want to die. Yeah. Got to go back. Got to go to sleep. I love that the dog actor looks through this, the hole he chewed in the ceiling at the sun and then looks back at Mike and then makes his choice. That was some great dog acting. He's like another day. (laughs) (laughs) Just you wait. I'm coming yes. back. Yeah. You know, this is like when, uh, next when the, time gadget next time, <laughs> <laughs> when the inspector shows up, I, I love that too. That he's like, you know, well, yeah, you're, you know, the, the, I've been tracking this, the, you know, whatever Vite. he's come over. Has anything strange happened, uh, since you've gone on vacation? It's like, yeah, every single night for some stupid, he's attacked by a pack of dogs <laughs> every single night. And they haven't, like, you know, honey, maybe we should, um, maybe we should pack this in for the weekend. And yeah, if a day one I got attacked by a pack of, uh, for all they know, wild dogs, I'd be done. Yeah, because well, they, the, and they think it killed their puppy. Yeah. Yeah. And they're just like, well, got to power through it. Yeah. Second yeah. night, the fucking thing opens the door of their, uh, RV and goes in and is like standing over them. They wake up and the thing's standing there. Wait, why did it leave that time? The yeah. sun came up again. I don't remember. Somebody distracted it. Another was, dog? Was there another dog? It might have oh, been one of the the necklace. No, that was the third night <laughs> when he was attacked <laughs> outside, wasn't it? No, the dog. the The one dog comes in the trailer and then oh. it lures him out, and then that's when the other dog attacks. It's right. the same. Thing. And then he the um. Uh, Dracula dog attacks him, but then he's wearing a silver cross around his neck, and the dog backs off. Yeah, this is fantastic. I mean, like it has to be witnessed to be believed. Uh, mm-hmm. But in the end, you know, after after uh, the two guys survive their their night of horror, right? When when I like the park rangers show up and they're like, yeah, I don't know if I believe dogs could do this. The whole place is fucking destroyed. There's claw marks everywhere. There's a hole in the ceiling. Maybe uh, there's no wolves. Maybe uh, canyon canyon dogs. They're different canyon Canyon dogs. Canyon Canyon dogs. dogs. Yeah. Um, Of course. But that leads to uh, the exic climax of the movie, um, which basically (laughs) there's a lot of driving. Some ADR. There's only one little bit of ADR. I was like, man, there should have been more ADR, but there's some rocking tunes. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, this soundtrack is pretty. Yeah, it's pretty groovy. These 70s 
movies you've been picking, Colin, lately have a kick-ass soundtrack every time. Yeah. Well, because you've gotten used to like the atonal sounds of modern <laughs> movies. Like they actually did used to have like harmonies and melodies and stuff like that. And because uh, everybody had a theme, I think there was the there was the Inspector Blanco theme and there was the family theme that they would alternate uh, between in this movie. Um, but they, they basically, so they're the whole thing when they get back to the, the campsite, cause that's, you know, our, uh, the, the shed's been destroyed. We gotta go back to the campsite and it's like, well, which way, when the dogs attacked you, which way did they go? And he's like, well, one night they went that way. The other night they went that way. I'm like, well, okay, you go that way and I'll go this way. And we'll, well, you know, if you see anything, let me know. This is like, <laughs> don't splice splitting up. Yeah. This is not what you do. And you just course, hunkered down for a whole night trying to stay away from these things, and now you're going to split up. Well, we do get the intense fight between Blanco and uh, and and Veit Schmidt, right? Yes. I mean, stunt work, uh, you know, people leaping over cars and stuff. No, that's not true. It's two old guys fighting. Probably didn't have stunt guys. So it's just like, do your own, <laughs> throw your own punches and whatever. Yeah. Um, and then Reggie Nalder gets staked, you know, you got to stake that motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, meanwhile, uh, Michael, he's over getting attacked in the convertible. Um, he- okay. We need to talk about this scene. Cause this is probably my favorite scene in the movie. Uh, so he's in the convertible and the top's down and Zoltan and all of his hench hounds are coming after him and he's slowly getting that canvas top not hard top like convertible to come up why did he not just start the car and drive away i think he was trying the whole time and it wouldn't start but the top will go up uh i guess like if you have electricity it'll go up but i guess the engine wasn't doing so good i don't know yeah but he was trying it's actually i think it's a good moment of suspense even though it's stupid that yeah there yeah yeah it can, it still kind of worked despite itself or in spite yeah, of itself. I think, I think it's a really good idea that like could be executed really well in a different movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he he. Uh, well, that was when he he let the, his his own dog into the car and turned out that it was a vampire. Oh no, not you too, Annie. Um, and then what happened after that? Because well, there's a major problem with this scene though because the dogs can't get into the car through the canvas top. Yeah, yeah. They're but they standing could chew a hole in a cabin. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, holy what? Oh, okay, I give up. I don't know what the, it was a garlic thing. No, um, but there ends up. Uh, they end up. You know, I think Blanco comes back, and they do end up in true vampire fashion. They stake all these dogs <laughs> to the ground. There's a shot, like a pullback of like, oh, what a night of horror! And there's all these dogs staked to the ground <laughs> around them. Jeez. Um, Zoltan, uh, he uh, he chases Drake to to like a cliffside. Actually, you know what? I'm, I appreciate. No, the- he no no no. He gets super lucky. Is what happens. He yes. holds up his crucifix. The dog steps backwards and falls into a ravine on a tree. This was, feels like something that Christopher Lee would do in a Dracula movie. Like I feel like he's constantly falling off things yeah. on two fences. I mean, this is a dra- These are these are vampire is, movie staples. It's not a yes. tree though. It's a fence. It's that fence that we saw the daughter go behind. Uh, so they did set it up that the fence was there. Uh, yes. Yeah, Zoltan falls on the fence and impales himself. But according to the logic of this movie, you just have to take him off the fence and he can come back to life. True that. True that. That's why they got to burn him. Yep, they got to burn him. Old Blanco's like, we have to burn them. And they actually do recruit the two fishermen who survive. Their dog turned into a uh, 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 Dracula. Is that what we're calling him? That's what it feels like in this movie. They were just, they, they there was just a family of Draculas. Uh-huh. There's a bunch of Draculas over there. He turned into a Dracula. Yeah. Did you um, ever talk about what happened with the puppy that got bit? Well, I mean, why don't you tell us? This is uh, because they well, didn't they forget very, about it. They, they have a very pet cemetery scene where they bury this puppy. And then not long after, we see an adorable little puppy crawl out of his grave. Because <laughs> you it's got so this is, vamp- this is vampire movie imagery that you have to do. 
Well, yes. then you're doing it with dogs. <laughs> it's this tiny little puppy just like poking up through the dirt, crawling out of his shallow grave, and then he runs off into the wilderness, and we don't see him again until the very end of the movie. Mm-hmm. But this They're is like it's over finally. Thank there's, God. There's like this pan uh, over, like yeah, it's like it's over. You know, that was the last one. Thank God, the, your nightmare is over. And the camera mm-hmm. leaves and starts panning, and I always love when they do this. Camera. It's pans. over like a, a, a destruction. Yeah, like there's the there's field of dogs carnage, and it is carnage. There was a decapitated owl. Yeah. Uh, there's a decapitated so like white. Yeah. There was like mice. There was like a squirrel and an owl. I was wondering what was missing its head and a rabbit. Yeah, yeah. it was actually kind of cute. Like this little trail of puppy carnage. <laughs> yeah, and then we end up seeing, yes, indeed, listener, the puppy. It's just like. It, <laughs> was, it, it was the thriller ending with the puppy. <laughs> yeah, it was. Imagine this puppy with giant fake fangs and little blood on the fangs. And just the goofiest looking face in the world. Colin, you have to post what yeah. this puppy's face looked like this time. Yes. Day. Turns toward the camera with glowing eyes, freeze frame credits. <laughs> it's like it's like a dork. It's a dork vampire dog. Yeah, it's just, you can't take it seriously because it's so stupid looking, but so cute. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> yeah. The, oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is commitment, right, on somebody's part. Like, this is where we're going to go all the way to the end. It doesn't matter if this concept's oh. ridiculous or not. No, it's coming back again. This is, and this is what we were saying. Like, it would be great if the daughter actually was bit and becomes a vampire because then there's a vampire, or there, we've, we've got a Dracula, and we've got a Dracula's dog sequel. Yep, and then Blanco has yeah. to come back, and oh, no, we, he has to team, team up with Drake to take down uh, the daughter and the daughter's dog. Well, Drank I really like the too. idea of a puppy being a vampire because they don't know how to act and they have no training or no sense of anything. So this puppy is just going to destroy everything. Yeah. Oh, that's very true. Drank He's this. like peeing fire on the run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I'll tell you what, listener, you've heard us uh, talk about this movie you've never seen, but uh, we have been hedging our bets whether or not uh, we enjoyed it or whether we would recommend that you watch it. So you want to hear what we have to say. But to do that, first of all, we're going to have to uh, answer some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. (laughs) Ow, my hands hurt for no reason. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Igor. Igor shares the name with uh, with Count Dracula, it turns out. Wait, is he? He's not Igor Dracula, is he? Igor Dracula. Right. Uh oh. We finally know Igor's last name <laughs> and his resting place. <laughs> um, well, we want to remind you how you can get a hold of us right in. We'll read uh, your comments on the air. You can follow along on Facebook, Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, or on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. You can email us Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And hey, with us, Holly. And you can follow along. On Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show, well, about Zoltan How to Dracula. It turns out Peter Gatt has seen the movie, and he says, "Damn, all I can remember of this is the ending, which I won't spoil, but it made me laugh like hell." Like, yeah. Oh my God! How I could you forget that? So <laughs> hard. Yeah. yeah. I so laughed so hard. hard. I, I, think I, I scared honestly. The cat. I know we just watched Uninvited, and I said that was the best freeze frame <laughs> ending of all time, but this definitely <laughs> rivals that. Yeah, this one's pretty great. I'm going to print this one out and put it on your wall. Yeah. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says, I used to watch Devil Devil Dog, The Hound of Hell all the time as a kid, and I loved it. This seems like it would fit right alongside it, and I shall be seeking this out for sure. Good job. Double feature. It turns out the only place you can see this currently streaming is through the library app Canopy has it, and you can also get the Kino Lorber uh, Blu-ray release. Uh, Michael Whitaker says he hasn't seen it, but if uh, Zoltan is anything like my dog, a few jerky treats, and he's no threat. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Why did no one try that in this movie? Why did no one just be like, here's some bacon, fuck off? (laughs) Yeah, because he had dogs with him. 
He had dogs with him. He did take a couple shots at it. That's right. There's a whole deal about like bringing the ammunition. He did say, I thought I hit that dog. Mm -hmm. It's a devil of a dog. You can't. Okay. Um, Two weeks ago, we watched a movie called Broken Arrow. We asked you, um, what was your favorite uh, John Woo movie? Well, Peter Gatt said The Killer. Uh, Mike Camp said Hard Boiled. Uh, Mm -hmm. Nick Capriola and Jacob Laws both said Face Off. But, I just watched Face Off, actually, ironically. There you it's go. Wonderful. But apparently we all chose poorly because Jody Ratcliffe, Sean Roger, Chris Steele, and Grant Parrish all said Hard Target was their ah. favorite John Woo movie. Uh, Sean Roger said he listened to our podcast uh, yesterday, and now he's got Rod Stewart's cover of Broken Arrow stuck in his head since then. Thank you. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, Tired Silver says, I still like this movie and came out the year I graduated high school. I remember all the people at my church said, don't go see it because John Travolta is a bad guy and he cusses. They all remember him from Greece. Oh. That wholesome because movie, Grease. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, we were asking. Do you not take it? Yeah. They've never actually yeah. listened to the lyrics of Grease Lightning. If yeah. Right. yeah. He's he's like a sex crazed youth. <laughs> like, what? Do they know what happens at the at the drive-in? No? Yeah. <laughs> um, they must have watched a heavily edited version of Grease. Yeah, maybe. Right, the TV cut. <laughs> um, well, let's see. We also asked if, uh, if Christian Slater um was uh action hero material chris Steele says he certainly had enough tries he was in young guns too he was in hard rains he was in cuffs i think the snarky teen jack nicholson thing stuck too well that it was hard for him to see it hard to see him as anything else he fell in the holes that uh, keanu managed to clear he says heathers and pump up the volume and true romance give him a lifetime pass though in in his book there you go sure uh, Grant Parrish says, I always thought he was a pretty boy type, like for girls or guys a few years older than me. He was there, Jonathan Brandis, but not as dreamy or innocent or adorable or as sweet. Wow. <laughs> he really likes J-Brands, huh? Uh, I was going to say, someone's got some thoughts. <laughs> uh, Aaron Flo said, if Tom Cruise can, then Yes. He says also, amen. Amen. (laughs) he also says, great podcast, new fan, found you on the episode, no retreat, no surrender. Oh, welcome. Yep. Welcome. You're in for some adventures. So uh, Holly and I were planning on going to see Mystery Science Theater was doing no retreat, no surrender as a whole tour. And then it got canceled because of COVID. Uh, Wow. Oh, no. So bummed. Uh, I know. uh, CJ Lewis says about... uh, Broken Arrow, ah, Samantha Mathis. She was in everything in the 90s, like Steve Gutenberg in the 80s, and then she just kind of vanished. Unlike Gutenberg, I don't think people got sick of her. I just kind of ventured off into the shadows of TV shows. Nobody is sick of the Goots, ever. Goot. Well, we also... Gutenberg. We pointed out on the Broken Arrow episode that she became the president of SAG-AFTRA, the uh, the actors' oh, union. Yeah. But she also starred with Christian Slater again in uh, not only Pump Up the Volume, but Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. Travis Legler says they she did. The Punisher. Oh, that's right. She wasn't Punisher. Yeah, she was the. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Travis Legler says they did star in Fern Gully, The Last Rainforest. How come Colin hasn't seen that movie? Question mark, exclamation mark, question, question. mark, exclamation mark. We all mark. had that same question. Because yeah. I was an adult when that movie came out. That's why. Oh. All right. Uh, Andrew Bradford <laughs> says, uh, I recently listened to the City of the Living Dead episode. It reminds me that when Netflix came online with the streaming, the horror section was top flight. Lots of goodies and oldies like City of the Living Dead, which I don't think would ever reappear on Netflix. They had a ton of crap on their watch, uh, uh, on there to watch that was reminiscent of walking through the video store age 12 and being mesmerized by the video box artwork part of a bygone era on uh, Netflix the, the old days I Netflix. just think of flying maggots when I think of that movie yeah it's the, the old country puking out your own guts uh, yeah. Kirby 39 or Kirby Curb 39 wants to know did you guys ever review the movie of unknown origin it's a 1980s movie with Peter Weller versus a rat and it would be perfect for you guys you know not yet, but it's on the list. That's the second recommendation for that movie that we've gotten mm-hmm. in the last like month. 
Mm-hmm. There you go. Well, thank you, everybody, for writing in. Again, you make what hey, we thanks. do here um, tolerable. No, it makes it uh, worth doing. Yeah, that's the only, well, it's not the only reason, but it's a big reason. All right, well, now we're going to go around the table and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, starting with... Michaela, we'll start with you today. What did you think of Zoltan, the cute little, the cute little Hound of Dracula? <laughs> I mean, I know Holly's going to probably disagree with me on this, but what I actually like movies that are about dogs most of the time. Um, I guess I should say I like horror movies specifically because like movies like A Dog's Purpose and like Hallmark shit like that. Fuck no. I don't want to watch that. But uh, like goofy ass horror movies like this about dogs, I'm super into. I mean, I brought Man's Best Friend last year, you know, so... This is like right up my alley. And I think being from the 70s gives it more credibility to me, if that makes sense. Yes. Um, it's I didn't know what to expect, but I was excited because I was like, at the very least, we're going to get some real janky dog acting, if nothing else. And it definitely delivered on that. It, I mean, vampire puppies. Like, when are you ever going to see vampire puppies in a movie right. ever again? And uh, like, I just love that he amasses a following of, of vampire dogs. Like, it just, it keeps trying to one-up itself, and I think it does a few times. And, like, I think the scene in the convertible is actually a really good idea, even if it wasn't executed the best. Um, I mean, it's clear they had no money to make this, but they still made a pretty watchable movie out of no budget. So I think you definitely just got to watch it because you're never going to see anything like this. It's a seeing is believing, and it's entertaining as fuck. And the end, the freeze frame ending alone is is worth watching it. It's it as far as animal movies go. I know we watch some that are kind of hard to watch because of cruelty aspects and stuff. And I actually think this one was a lot better than I was expecting it to be. I thought it mm-hmm. might be hard to watch at points, but it seemed like all the animals were treated fairly well. So that's not a big concern if that's something that bothers you. We've definitely watched way worse stuff on this show when it comes to that. Yes. So definitely got to check out Zoltan. The Hound of Dracula. It is amazing. It is worth worth digging to find it. Def- definitely. Sean, what did you think? Um, uh, 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 Zoltan. I mean, uh, the thing, uh, I really like this movie. Uh, the thing I like about it is, uh, we discussed it a little earlier, they really are just, they're taking the staples of Dracula and then just putting them on a dog. And as ridiculous as that may sound in the pitch, um, I think it works really well in this movie. Um, it either works really well as um, uh, a serious thing or it becomes funny and entertaining. Um, I, uh, I think we're lucky that it works both ways and it's not, uh, I'm not gonna say it's not cheesy, but it's not, um, uh, I, you know, I'm not laughing at it. I think I'm laughing with it. I don't know, something like that. Like, but it's, Um, it's a fun movie. I was surprised by this movie because I wasn't expecting like the dogs to be like the Draculas and, and doing everything the vampires would do in a regular Dracula movie. So I was very surprised by this movie. Um, I think everyone does really well. I I think the dogs do really well in this movie. Um, uh, they're adorable. It's, it's just a, it's a fun movie. I was surprised by this movie. Um, I would definitely watch it again, especially for nothing else in that freeze frame at the end. Um, vampire puppies. Um, it's, you know, this, this is a good time to be had in this movie. I, I really enjoyed it. So I'm going to, uh, recommend Zoltan, AKA Dracula's dog. Cause it's Dracula's dog. How do you not watch a movie called Dracula's dog? <laughs> I mean, come on, <laughs> Holly, what did you think of Dracula's dog? Um, I was kind of on the fence about this one. I, um, I mean, Michaela's correct. I normally hate dog movies. I, I really hate horse movies. That's my, that's my number one. Fuck oh. horse. Please. Fuck Why so? Just uh, I just hate them. I really hate them. I'm not. They're all big... sad and they're all the same. It, yeah, I just I don't know. I don't like it. I feel like... them all. Not a horse girl. Noted. Yeah, I feel like they're just generic. Not a horse girl. I feel like I don't know that I don't want to be. I'm not the weird horse girl. I'm not an equestrian. Whatever. Anyway, um, don't like dog movies. But I agree with Michaela that I would make an exception for dog horror movies because that's totally different. I'm not going to watch fucking. I don't know. I I had to go see Alpha. Fuck that movie. Anyway, um, this movie though, 
I agree with Sean that it did un, it did things that were unexpected. I was not anticipating that the dogs were Dracula. I did not see that coming. I really thought it was going to be Dracula's pet. And no, the dog was Dracula. And I was not expecting that. I quite enjoyed that. I think my thing with this movie is that it was, it was too tame. Like, I feel like they could have gone so much more. Like, they could have gone for it. Like, it could have been so over-the-top ridiculous. And parts of it were... But not like enough. Like I said, it was it was kind of tame, I think. But it very well could have been just because they didn't have the budget to go bigger. Um, sure, we could have used a few more campers getting yeah, eaten. Yeah, like I wanted, I wanted more. I was like, you're going for it, just fucking go for it and make a fucking vampire dog movie. You know, like it was. I don't know. I was really on the fence because part of me was a little disappointed that they didn't go bigger. But I did enjoy what they did with it. Um, and I think the I think the freeze frame of the vampire puppy at the end solidified it. I was like, yeah, I would watch this again just for that screen, just for just for the freeze frame of the vampire puppy at the end because that made me laugh really hard. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna recommend it. It it, it could have been so much more ridiculous, but it was still fun. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll recommend. I'll say go for it. You should watch it. Colin, bring us home. Why did you Why did you bring this movie tonight? Because I watched this movie with a, a stupid grin on my face from like <laughs> beginning to end, especially tonight. I don't know. I'm in a mood or something. I, I was watching this just like <laughs> la- tears falling down my face as I was watching. I was uh, crying from laughing so hard. Now, again, <laughs> is that does that mean the movie was good? Uh, entertainment yes. value was high okay because i know that uh if you look back at contemporary reviews of this movie uh it was reviled as like this is the lowest of the low this is you know you have milked the dracula idea beyond like i mean well well past like you know the that's why it's funny yeah where it's like yeah you're doing a movie about dracula's dog i mean come on this is stupid it's ridiculous this is the worst idea ever (laughs) this is what i was talking about like last week or two weeks ago about batman movies i want we need batman's dog movie like that's how many batman (laughs) movies i want we get to batman's dog (laughs) well here's the batman's dog dog's parents also killed and had pearls yes Yes. she had a pearl (laughs) necklace collar and everything yeah I mean, but that's that. What is what we're talking about here? They, I mean, I don't know if we have conveyed it to you. It is a dog vampire movie, a vampire <laughs> movie that just has dogs as the vampires, but all the cliches are still there, <laughs> just fulfilled by vampires. It's amazing. Yep. Um, do we say that the the Romanian? Soldiers at the beginning, like, are just American actors in the Hollywood woods. <laughs> they yeah. not even did or try. I mean, <laughs> this is not a good movie, but in some ways, it is a great movie. I mean, it's just it's fun because I think this is a thing that that you could only do in the in the seventies because they weren't you know self aware. And you know, Holly was saying it should have been they should have gone bigger. I mean, that you know is us looking back on it now. Back then, it was like this was crossing some kind of line of like, what are you people doing? Some you know, like just decency. by doing it at all, <laughs> you know. Um, but the fact that you have, you know, you got three really good actors in this, an Oscar winner, you know, in uh, Jose Ferrari, you got Michael Pataki, who's, you know, solid, and Reggie Nalder, who's your creepy, you know, a known commodity, you know, as creepy guy. Uh, and they all play it straight. And the only thing that's wrong with it is the concept and the script, you know? Um, and I mean, the direction's kind of TV movie ish. Yeah. I mean, it could be, if you're watching this, like thinking this is going to be like a great thing, it could be slow and kind of dry. Uh, uh, but from the perspective that I watch it, this is a fucking four star movie. This, uh, movie was like, you know, like a, maybe not to the heights of your, or Star Crash, or sure. one of those kind of things, but it's in that league, right? Of the uh, the great discoveries, where you're like, "Wow, this is uh, something else that has to be seen to be believed." Dracula's dog. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, if people from the seventies were watching this now, we were you'd transported back. They would think we're all nuts. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or this is a, a unanimous four, uh, re- four recommends for Dracula's yes. dog. And now we can see it thanks to the magic of blue hey, in uh, crystal clear high definition. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> you know, somebody put work into Dracula's dog. Yeah, we live in a, a rarefied time. <laughs> um, yep. So yeah, I would say you uh, if you're a fan of this show and the stuff that we like, then you got to check this out. Uh, Zoltan, Hound of Dracula, aka Dracula's Dog. So next week we're gonna watch. Well, hold on. On a, on a side note, have any of you guys ever seen the movie The Doberman Gang? No. No. It's about a group of bank robbers who train four Doberman, Doberman pinchers to rob banks. So this is from, on your list to bring, right? From I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a freak show movie, but it's from 1972. Oh. I, I, I mean, maybe I don't, but I've only seen a, a little bit of it, like the dogs actually. But they train a group of Dobermans to rob banks. So if you're in the mood for more Doberman movies, that should be your next one. So that's the real Dog Day afternoon movie, huh? Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I've never seen a movie. There was another like, and maybe this is a thing because this is, you remember in the seventies post Jaws, we were going through a when animals attack phase also, because there was a movie mm. from back then called the pack, which I haven't seen, but they were all the, you know, that was about a bunch of killer dogs, but there were all these, you know, when animal attacks things, the yeah. jaws of Satan. Yeah, check out last summer when we did like four of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Just listen back to previous episodes of this show. Um, so next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by. John, what are we watching next week? Uh, next week, we're going to watch a movie from 1989 called Offerings. Is, that, is Vincent Price in that? This. Not burnt offerings, just offerings. What am I thinking of? I'm thinking of the offspring. Offerings. Maybe. Shit, offerings. I don't, I, that's not. Oh, I see question marks all the way around. I don't know yeah. this one. I love it when this happens, though. I <laughs> when I go, what? The uninvited I, say, I have, question mark. I have also not seen this movie, but okay. I watched, my friend sent me the trailer the other day, and he's like, dude, you have to watch this. And then I watched the trailer, and I was like, dude, we have to watch this. All so right. <laughs> It's offerings. on my list, but I don't remember why I put it on my list. You yeah, know? See, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. Now like, I'm sure I heard about it on a podcast or something at one point, but... Sure. All right, we're getting into that kind of the creepy, creepy time of year. Halloween has started, mm-hmm. as far as some people are concerned. Yes, uh, so for me. Next, yep. next week, another horror movie, Offerings, on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us on this quest of discovery. And until then... We hope you'll then, check out our Tee Public page. <laughs> oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Michaela, you want to... Yeah, we have merch now, guys. You can go to tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show. We'll also have links on our social media. And you can go buy T-shirts, mugs, pillows, uh, tapestries, stickers, magnets. You fucking name it. Can we put a design that's got our faces so they can get a pillow with their faces on it? (laughs) I mean, like, we could. We have that picture, (laughs) that, like, anime picture or whatever of all four of us. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. We've got some merch. Uh, If there's something you want to see on a T-shirt or something you think would make good merch, tell us about it, and we'll see what we can do. I like that Holly was so tickled that we have merch. She's like, we have merch. You giggled. You tittered. You teed. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So go check that out. I'm wearing my merch. Yeah, that's right, she is. is. She got hers first. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, that's uh, that's all for this week. Next week, we'll see you then. And until then, the basement is going dark.